That is a Lennox three phase. And it was a straight cool. I'll wait till I get the cover opened up. Those that have been following my channel know what this is. So anyway, it was a three phase um, unit, straight cool. I got it for free, brand new, never installed. So this was like brand new when I put it in here. But I did use it for a couple experiments before it got placed in here. This capacitor hasn't been hooked up because I took out the single phase, uh, you know, split capacitor motor. Because I was running an ECM, but you see the e <laughs> this is all an experimental unit. That's an ECM with the module separated. The module is put down there below my VFD. And the reason I put that kind of in there was messing with it is because you can actually put DC power directly into a regular ECM module, just like you can the variable frequency drive. And I was experimenting a whole bunch when I first got this unit. I'll show you with what. I was experimenting by taking all these solar panels that I put up over here. And this, uh, the combined and series power from these solar panels is 330 volts nominal and when it's unloaded it gets up to about 369 like where I saw it again today once the uh, charger wasn't really needing the batteries already topped off when I got home so the voltage lifts up so nominal is 330 volts DC from all these solar panels I bought with Trump's bailout money stimulus money I should say back when that stupid COVID pandemic was going on he was gullible to it Gave us those checks while well, I bought me a bunch of solar panels with it. And so I had gotten this thing, I hooked it up, and I, I used to experiment by just putting DC right into the uh, Yacht Squad variable frequency drive and then into that motor. And the funny thing is, I was able to keep this whole outside unit running, which is powered directly off those panels. No utility power. It was kind of funny. So I since then took the solar power and kind of got it going through an actual. Uh, hybrid charger inverter unit that runs the lithium ion batteries but before that I was messing around with that solar power doing that so this was a straight cool and I converted this to a heat pump so I added that reverse valve and that thermal expansion valve check valve at the bottom we'll see more in a few minutes when I take this apart so I'm basically gutting this because I'm going to use this I'm getting rid of it and uh, I'm going to repurpose that compressor right there into that other carrier slender unit. And might put that variable frequency drive in there. <laughs> Since it's still running, I want to see how many years it runs like that. Someone else was talking about it, you know, in some of the comments on another one about, you know, someone asked if you could use single phase in the one. I said, yeah, it's, it just, you know, the... You're not using all the rectifier diodes when you do that, so you're pulling more peak current through the, the fewer diodes, so that part might fail. But from the DC bus onward, the VFD doesn't know the difference, and it outputs three-phase power, which is what I've been doing. So that's been in there. I don't know, we'll have to look back through my videos. It's been three or four years. Might have been five years, I don't know. We'll have to look. So I'm pulling out the charge right now. And I'm going to start stripping this thing down. I'll show you guys what the guts looks like. Some people can look at when I was building it a couple years ago. But now you're going to see what it become of it. So this unit, actually, the refrigeration part never failed me. The VFD never failed. The compressor never failed. I had to put bearings in the motor, which I have a sticker on there that I put bearings in the motor. I literally changed the bearings in that, that fan motor. <laughs> Just because I could. They're ball bearing. So... I didn't have any issues with anything in this unit that I can remember. So it's for an experimental unit, it's ran pretty good indeed. So I'm gonna get to it. I need two hands and I'll show you a couple of updates. It's been so long now that I kind of forgot how I did some of this stuff. So that module, DCM module, I kind of ran a <laughs> couple <laughs> bolts through the front of this thing right here. Use a couple digital inputs on here to control speed. 
this 40 hertz, 60 hertz. I need to be blown out, I'm sure. So I got all these wires loose. I should be able to reach in there and pull this out. So here's the fan motor. So I ran the three wires from the motor down to the module. There's a module at the back. That way it would have the right, uh, you know, depth for the blades. So I just took out the screws that I had holding this on here. I put a bunch of goo on there just to keep any, you know, moisture out of the electronics section. There it comes. Hopefully it's recording my audio over that freaking loud recovery machine. There's the old Gaskoa J1000. And I have like another new one in the box. However, uh, I think I might just put this exact one in that other unit because I want to see it continue to work. Here's the ratings on it's not all that much. I'll put up to 20 amps. I think it was a three kilowatt. Hopefully. <laughs> The pressure itself is not even a real full three ton, like always on these things. We'll see more when I get it apart. This is one of those things that started out kind of neat and tidy at first, had everything labeled and everything. But then, you know, after I messed around with it multiple times, changing my mind, hooking things up differently over time, then, you know, it started uh, becoming a mess. But, again, it worked the entire time. Okay, here it is. The compressor is a ZP29. Three-ton unit. That's the compressor that came with this unit. That compressor has never been taken out of this unit. Came in this Lennox unit. I just added the reversing valve and the thermal expansion valve. I like doing it this way for the balance port. In case you ever have to take it off, right? I, I added these feeders, so when this one goes uh, parallel passage up, parallel passage down, parallel passage up, parallel passage down, and then you got one more here. Then they all collect when it's going in uh, cooling mode as to mostly condensed liquid, so it goes down and it can't go through the check valve in cooling mode, so it then uh, goes through the subcool loop couple more loops back and forth on the bottom then comes out all subcool liquid when you're in heating mode you got your liquid coming this way and then the uh, um, check valve is wide open so it's gonna favor going this way instead of that way doesn't really matter and uh, it's gonna go straight to thermal expansion valve and then you got your five in this case parallel branches one two three four five yep and then comes out common suction at that point it worked perfect, perfect, no issues. Essentially did the two coils and the new cylinder unit the same way, and the unit that I've been running from upstairs in place of this, been running the same way for weeks now, so it's overdoing. So, all right, let me get my compressor out of here. Okay, we got the DC compressor out. I mean, it's a pretty big sucker. I mean, this is a three-ton scroll. Almost looks physically smaller, but they're probably about the same physical size. So I just got done cutting these off real quick. The three feet aren't gonna work. There's looks like there's a pad position here, one back here, one here, one there, one where. I can't remember what I did in the other one, but I think I tacked a couple spots down. That's what I want to do here. Kind of just doing this quick and off the cuff as always. So. Here's the studs that I had cut off. Just ground down a little bit, so we're gonna put one here, where that little dimple is. I kind of hammered a dimple where they go. One right there, one right there. This one's kind of in a little bit of an odd spot. I don't know if I'm gonna put one there or not. The interesting thing with the torch is it can kind of, you know, get it started and tack it with no fill rod just by liquefying the metals. wheel to it real quick and then add a little more weld on the other side. It just needs to be tacked down a couple sides. It's be more than strong enough. 
that one's not so bad. That one I just burned a hole through the pan, even though the rod is welded pretty good. <laughs> well, I'm not going to push it. I'm not going to fill that one. And these are very dissimilar metals in that this pan is pretty thin compared to these. So, and I turn the tor torch back up a little bit on the TIG and it really welded really <laughs> quick. It got really hot really quick. But when I just first tacked this one, I needed to readjust it. And I just had one tack without welding it up and no filler stick. And I took my channel locks on there and I could not even break that loose. I had to grind it. So these are really strong welds. <laughs> Ain't going anywhere. There it is. Scroll compressor sitting in there like it belongs in here. Bolted right in. Sitting right there. So now I just got to uh, pull this out or change it and do a 90 up into here. And then last time I kind of did something weird. I don't remember why it was just what I had, but I kind of came up and did a quick turn over into this one uh, on the other one, which I thought was kind of funky looking when I was done, but it works just fine. All right, got this on initial pressure test. Low pressure for now. That way I can look for bubbles. Start putting hundreds of PSI in there, and it's actually harder to see the bubbles than it is at lower pressure. So, so it didn't come out all that bad, better than the other one did. Uh, this might look a little funky because I used that piece instead of a straight piece, but again, I'm using what I got. I don't have a truck full of parts anymore. I do have a whole bucket worth of uh, <laughs> fittings that I've had accumulated for like 20 years, but not a bunch of pipes and, you know, we, not a full assortment of reducers and things like that. Of course, the spin switch does most of it for me. So actually for the suction pipe, that came out really good. It came over here. This pipe was already like this right here on the other one. So I just cut it here. So the only piece I added to do the suction was this piece here where I added a tap and then one elbow right here. So it's come out pretty good. And then for the uh, discharge, this line went down. I turned it and went up. People might say that's weird. <laughs> and usually they do go down first, but whatever. I did this on the other one. It went up, over, so, and then I cut it right here. So I've only added this piece right here. It's pretty straightforward this time. We'll see how it goes. I don't know if there's any reason why they all, I think they just go down just because that's where they connect and where the reverse valve usually is. But that's way up here on this one. And of course, the discharge on the rotaries comes straight out the top. <laughs> anyway, so not gonna worry about it. We'll see how it goes. On both cases, I left the uh, accumulator in there. I did not have an accumulator in the Lennox. Some people kind of gave me the stink eye, and I'm like, well, you know, there are units here that have a scroll with no accumulator. <laughs> and um, they usually have them for heat pumps. Because you do, this does act as an accumulator to some degree, but not for a lot for when you're running in uh, heating mode in the winter here, and it actually gets cold and might accumulate some refrigerant in there. But my upstairs unit didn't run that much heat, so it would never had an issue. That's actually the same exact compressor. So this compressor came in the Linux. Now it's in here. Found its new home. <laughs> so should be good. I'm going to let this sit overnight. I'm going to bump the pressure up to 100 or so and then uh, let it sit overnight at least and then the only piping I'll have to finish in here is I'll have to just uh, drop the liquid and gas lines down down here like I did on the other one and put the panels on and once I get these panels down here I could put this one back up and I'll work on the electronics so anyway that should do it for this so in case it's the end of this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, comment, whatever. Catch you guys later.